Hey everybody, Traveling Trav here. I got into another one of Zach Ballinger's posts here. He says, Decades ago, a couple of dudes decided to go tray pan a bunch of mice, as one does. They then shoved a single little bitty wire into a different part of each respective mouse's brain and then shocked him just to see what happens. This is science. They were scientists. Silver lining. The mice had to have been anesthetized at each step so they wouldn't wiggle wiggle. Not so silver lining. Only for the surgery wiring mounting parts. Along the line, one very, very lucky mouse happened to be pierced in its pleasure center. Others presumably had their mortal anguish brain bits poked. Hey, do you think they could tell the difference between the two? I'm thinking of cats. Fem cats scream and claw and jump around like they're being murdered every time you even try to mate with them. And have you ever human coitus while your dog is in the room? They don't know what to do. They think you're hurting her. Plus, there have been cases where a person gets stuck in an unending orgasm, and they say pleasure quickly became agony. <laughs> Any fucking ways. They could tell after a while, the scientists. <laughs> or immediately. I don't know. <laughs> Next, the scientists installed a switch under a little pad that the mice could depress in order to get shot with short jolts of pure pleasure. But they had to keep pushing the button over and over for each jolt. They would all just waste away, eschewing food or water, just clicking all the way to the end. You. What the fuck am I even reading right now? I'm getting there in the very next paragraph, and it's an idea you haven't ever heard before, so be patient, please. Okay, so somewhere in some hospital or house or bunker, there is surely, at this very moment, some dude laying in bed, attended to by nurses who probably signed an NDA monitoring the array of tubes attached to him, either removing or delivering fluids, and in said dude's hand is a little switch topped with a bright red button that he is just click, click, clicking away at light speed, button pressing, muscles swollen, sure to beat even the world's reigning champion of one, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war, while the rest of his body, long since atrophied, lays forgotten even to himself, his face slack-jawed, with heavy-lidded, glazed eyes, taking in absolutely nothing important. Why the button? It takes high waves to make you value calm waters, silly buns. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Lisa Berryhill Kelly says, Pain has a very bad rap these days, yet growth without it is impossible. I love to read Zach's stuff. It cracks me up. Here's my response. Pain. How do we work with it? We might think about it like this. Pain and loss are written into this program, this matrix. Pain and death, unavoidable. Maybe our arising consciousness is located somewhere along a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, we are an unconscious NPC, programmed by our culture, family of birth, and all our inherited trauma, epigenetics, inherited karma. On the other end of the spectrum, we are a realized consciousness, piloting an avatar. We transcend the loss, the pain. We consciously cooperate with the greater purpose as far as we understand that greater purpose. I worked for eight years as a licensed physical therapist assistant. In part, it was a study in pain. Pain is subjective, truly, all in our head, our mind. I believe that. However, it does not seem that we always have the power to transcend our pain. Mind over matter? When I worked with clients in physical therapy, sometimes people said to me, oh, I have a really high pain tolerance. Others said, I can't deal with pain at all. My training told me to inquire with each patient upon every visit about their pain level. Scale of 0 to 10. We define 10 as unbearable, a trip to the emergency room. I began to wonder how people knew that they had a high pain tolerance. One patient told me, my pain is a 10, but I don't need to go to the hospital. Maybe someone who says they have a high pain tolerance is actually just patting themselves on the back. People who made those types of statements seem to be of a particular personality type. However, I did notice that some people would press through their pain into further injury. So, in that instance, I was inclined to believe them. For instance, I met a bricklayer who believed that laying more bricks would fix his wounded shoulder. That seems strange to me. 
I've had migraine headaches in which the pain was so acute that I vomited. That was intense. On many occasions, I tried to push through that migraine experience in the workplace. I found it impossible. I told myself, it's all in your head. Leave it behind, brother. You don't want this. I always lost to the migraine in the workplace. In other words, I could not serve any clients as a PTA while I was hurting like that. But there was also another experience I had on a number of occasions. Sometimes, if I sat in meditation, I could separate from the pain. It was like the pain was there and I was here. I can't tell you why I couldn't do it all the time, but the fact that it could happen inspired me to push into it, increasing my inquiry into personal pain. Cetaceans thought to themselves, and I'm thinking of orcas right now for some reason, let's develop our echolation skills and raise our families in the cold, dark sea. Humans said, fuck the cold, too painful. How about I kill another animal and wear its skin while I sleep in a cave? And it seems that a huge part of what makes us believe that we are not animals is our ability using our particular brand of intelligence to separate ourselves from nature and so much of the cold and darkness that comes without animal skins, four walls, and electricity. Many years ago, before I worked in physical therapy, I had a friend who told me that my pain was all in my head. At the time, I found that statement to be offensive. It felt like he was telling me that my pain was not real, and he was. And apparently, that is what I was discovering when, in meditation, I realized that this deeper consciousness is not exactly the same as my pain experience. What I mean is, there seemed to be a deeper part of me that could observe the pain that was happening in my body. It was not unlike what I've heard described as an out-of-body experience. An inquiry into pain is, I believe, inevitably an inquiry into consciousness itself. Carl Jung and Joseph Campbell encouraged us to seek the wisdom in our collective stories when making consciousness inquiries. So here goes. Turns out there are these traditional stories about people who transcend pain in the midst of violent and humiliating deaths. There is one story about a man who died one of these deaths in the Middle East about 2,000 years ago. The story says that his spiritual practice was so disciplined that when his pain was at its greatest, he cried out from his inner depths and asked for forgiveness for those who had driven nails into his hands and feet, fastening him to a wooden torture device. Now that is truly an epic story of pain management, is it not? How do we manage our pain? Can we get better at managing our pain? How do we maintain our focus when we are in pain? Can we increase our pain tolerance? Or can we discover a level of consciousness that is deeper than our pain experience? It seems that humanity has been mashing that red button like a motherfucker. We don't want to hurt, and we might be able to describe the human condition in terms of our drive to avoid pain, discomfort, and death. It seems that any true discipline requires that we push through some amount of difficulty in order to reap the fruit that awaits for us on the other side. It appears to me that the story of the cross may be pertinent to the pain inquiry that you are making. The story continues, saying that because this man in the Middle East made this impossible decision to forgive in his greatest pain, that he experienced some kind of resurrection, a transcend dance. I'm not asking you to believe this story. I am, however, wondering if that story might still be pertinent in a world which seems to be so averse to pain. Where have you reaped the benefits of pressing through the pain? How much pain can we endure? As a species, are we hopelessly addicted to the red button mashing? If so, what kind of education can help us out of that mess? Who are the folks in our world today who model for us how to rise above our pain? Thanks, Zach. I love your posts.